You've got to get a hold of yourself. The iPad Pro has been my main computer for the better part of four years now, and I'm gonna give you guys three reasons as to why, even in 2022, the M1 iPad Pro or even the 2018 iPad Pro can be your one and only computer. So without further ado, let's talk about it. right in. Reason number one has to be the versatility and overall design of the iPad Pro. This iPad Pro was the first one of its kind with that industrial design back in 2018. They got rid of the home button, they finally fixed the Apple Pencil charging situation and made it a little bit more tangible and they made it kind of make sense as opposed to just plugging it into the bottom and having this weird situation. But the overall versatility of the iPad is what sets it apart from pretty much any other computing device. Because as a standalone iPad, yes, it's just a tablet. It's a very powerful tablet that I would kind of focus on design work with the Apple Pencil. But then you grab something like the Magic Keyboard, which turns it into a completely different product. There aren't too many tech products or any products in general where if you get an accessory to that product, it changes how you use that product entirely. So when that Magic Keyboard came out and 13.4 cursor support was released back with iPadOS 13.4, it really changed the game and turned the iPad Pro into the most versatile computing device out on the market to this day, in my opinion. The way I use the iPad changes on a day-to-day -day and on a task-to-task -task basis. If you want it to be just your content consumption machine, you can just use it as a tablet. Use it on the couch, use it in the bed, use it on your desk as a tablet, use it in the, on the plane. Whatever the case may be, it is a beautiful looking tablet with the best display on any tablet that you can think about, especially on the 12.9 M1 route. The mini LED display, now I would not say go out and get the brand new iPad Pro if you have, let's say, a 2020 or a 2018 just for the display. But if you are on the market and you're thinking about getting an iPad Pro, the 12.9 inch mini LED, like pro display, XDR display, I don't really know what to name it at this point. It is absolutely wonderful. So just from a content consumption machine standpoint, it's amazing. But then again, for $1,100, there are other things that you can get for the $300, $400 price point if all you wanna do is watch YouTube and Netflix. But then as you start to accumulate accessories for the iPad Pro, you get yourself an Apple Pencil, and then it goes from a tablet to a creative machine, you know? Use the Apple Pencil to pinpoint stuff in PowerPoint. Use the Apple Pencil to take notes inside of the Notes application or any other third-party Notes application out there and let it sync across all of your devices. So it goes from being a casual content consumption machine, now to the ultimate note-taking device. Big shout out to Paperlife for always sponsoring the channel. If you guys do want to get something, protect your iPad screen at all costs. Paperlike Screen Protector is the way to go, shameless plug. So getting an Apple Pencil, even an Apple Pencil alternative, completely changes how you use this thing from a tablet into now a digital piece of paper that you can use to take notes, design whatever you want. And honestly, the Apple Notes app, yes, it's missing a couple features that a lot of things like Good Notes or Notability have, but if you need something quick that syncs across all of your devices that continuously gets better over time, Apple Notes is completely free and included in all your Mac OS and iPad OS devices, so that's what I stick with. But then you add another accessory like the Magic Keyboard. And when the Magic Keyboard came to light with its tiny little trackpad, which we all thought was gonna be terrible because of how small it was, but then it's chiclet style keyboard that adopted the design and the function of the regular Magic Keyboard, this thing completely changed how we use the iPad. Because the second you slap the iPad in magnetically and those three pin connectors kind of hit off, now you have some sort of version of a laptop with that cursor support. And like I mentioned, that trackpad, even though it is tiny physically, the way you use the iPad with the Magic Keyboard is a little bit different than how you would use it on, let's say, a traditional laptop. Yes, there is that point and click precision when you are using the cursor, but the trackpad for me mostly has been more so for kind of gesture-based controls and kind of an extension of how I would use all the gesture controls on the physical display itself. So I long press to get the options menu, I three swipe up to go to the home page. I three swipe up on the trackpad to get you into multitasking. I use the trackpad to get me into the multitasking mode. So overall, the trackpad from an implementation standpoint, I've never been in a situation where I've like wanted more trackpad real estate on the Magic Keyboard, which I thought would be the furthest thing from the truth. But overall, that tiny trackpad is so powerful and it just lets you use the iPad in a brand new way. So now we went from a content consumption machine to then a design machine and note-taking machine to now an actual laptop where I'm sitting there multitasking with multiple productivity suite applications like Microsoft Word, Microsoft PowerPoint, Microsoft Excel, answering emails the same speed and efficiency that I would answer emails, let's say on a laptop because of the Magic Keyboard. So name another product where the versatility like this can be matched. Like in my opinion, yes, they are expensive accessories, but once you do take the plunge into this accessory ecosystem, 
for the iPad Pro, the iPad Pro becomes a totally different monster. So you go from content consumption machine to design and note-taking machine to now a full-fledged, in my opinion, computer that you can get a lot of work done, especially with Safari's desktop class browsing experience that they did implement with iPad OS 13. And then finally, once you're done with all that productivity, all that productivity work on the Magic Keyboard, pull out a gaming controller, a Bluetooth powered gaming controller, and now Xbox and PlayStation controllers are actually supported natively on iPad OS. So just plug that in and all of a sudden, it turned into your gaming console. So those are four different things, four different products built into one. So you have just a regular tablet for content consumption. You have a design tool, like a digital notepad. You have an actual computer. And then you finally have a gaming console with Apple Arcade getting better and better every year. And also the more and more app store games that are being adopted and implemented for iPadOS 15 and hopefully iPadOS 16. Again, the versatility on an iPad Pro is completely unmatched. So that was category number one. You have the versatility and design of the iPad Pro. It's again, in 2018, it was ahead of its time. Now some companies are starting to catch up a little bit and there will probably be a new design with the 2022 iPad Pro whenever that does release later this year. But now for category number two, it has to be the App Store. This what we call the App Store. Apple's been building on its App Store for the last like 12 years, ever since I believe it was iOS 2 with the iPhone 3G whenever that came out and Apple kind of has a monopoly on this app store. Whenever somebody comes to me and they ask me, hey, should I get an iPad Pro or just get a MacBook Air for school or for work or for this or for that? The first thing I tell people is go to the app store and see what applications you absolutely need to have. And if the app store has it, then you're good to go. As of five days ago, there was over 2.1 million applications on the app store that can be natively used with the iPad Pro or any iOS and iPadOS device. There is no other marketplace that big for apps anywhere in the world, whether it's Android, whether it's sideloading apps, whether it's third party, like application marketplaces, the App Store, it is by far the largest library of any applications that you would need. So for me, Microsoft Suite is totally there. Pages, Excel, Keynote, that's all there for me. You have the whole Google Suite, which I use for work. Then you have things like LumaFusion, Procreate, Affinity Photo for all the creative stuff. And then if you want a notes application, there's like 500 different notes applications to choose from. So overall, just that, that expansiveness of the App Store will allow you to get whatever work you need to get done on the iPad Pro. Whereas on something like Mac OS or Windows, yes, there's still a lot of applications out there, but they're not in one single marketplace. And yes, there are a lot of web apps, but there's nothing better than having an actual physical application built for a certain operating system. And the iPad Pro has that going for it versus pretty much every other system doesn't. And now the last category that I wanna talk about is the iPad Pro being the ultimate single task champion. So a lot of people think that with iPad Pro and iPad OS, the multitasking isn't great because you can't have a bunch of different things open at once. And that's where something like Mac OS or Windows 11 or even Linux or Samsung Dex or a Chromebook, those are all things that have more of a traditional style floating window situation where you can have multiple windows open at once. But for me personally, I could like to look at things a little bit, you know, glass half full. So with the iPad Pro, I see myself being more productive on the iPad Pro itself than I am, let's say on Mac OS on my MacBook Air. And the main reason is because the iPad Pro, the multitasking isn't amazing. So you can really only multitask with up to three different applications. And if you want to be productive, you could probably only do two. But if you get, need to get something done and you have the tools like, let's say, LumaFusion to edit a video or Affinity Photo to edit a thumbnail or Microsoft Word to create some documents, opening up that single application and the fact that you can only really open one productively makes sure that I get that single task done and it gives you the single focus on whatever task you have to do. If you're on a traditional laptop or desktop computer, you have the ability to be distracted. You can open up YouTube in one browser. You can open up, let's say, Spotify on another browser. You can open up all the different distractions that you could think of. Meanwhile, on the iPad Pro, if you wanna get distracted, maybe you can pull up Twitter for a second, but then you can go right back to whatever you were doing because there's no real efficient way to have four, five, six, seven windows open on the iPad Pro, unless you use shift screen. If I really sit down in time, how quickly I get my tasks done, the iPad Pro, I'm getting them done a lot faster just because I can't really be distracted by the fact that the multitasking isn't as great as we want it to be. Now there is rumors about a Mac OS Lite coming to the iPad Pro, which I'm all for, for floating windows and things like that, but I do love my iPad Pro when it comes to single task completion of any anything that I need to get done, like I said earlier, like LumaFusion video, Affinity Photo, even editing stuff inside of Excel, editing any last minute PowerPoints, it's easy to get it done because I'm not distracted by anything else. So those are my three main reasons as to why I still think and I still use my iPad Pro as my main computer. First, the versatility and design are completely unmatched, right? You have the ability to use it as a tablet, as a digital notepad, and then finally a real computer, depending on what accessories you have. Then you also have the actual design of it, which is a beautiful design, the four speaker system, no home button, 
Face ID is a wonderful way of biometric unlock, which remains unmatched to this day. And then finally, it's just a very pretty device when it comes to the design. And then you have that huge app library of 2.1 million applications, which is growing on a daily basis. So whatever applications you need to get done to get you from point A to point B on a task, it's going to be in the app store for you to use. So it's just a matter of making sure the applications you use are actually in the app store. And then B, if there aren't any applications that you need in the app store, there's probably a way to get from point A to point B, but just in a different way with a little bit of a learning curve. And then lastly, it's a single task champ in my opinion. Like I said, it's very easy to get distracted on things like Mac OS and Windows 11, but on the iPad Pro, it's very, very hard to get distracted. But that's gonna do for this video. Leave some comments down below as to what are some of the things that you guys love about the iPad Pro, maybe don't like about the iPad Pro. Do you own one? Are you in the market for one? Kind of, I'm curious to know what your main computer is and why it is your main computer. But if you guys made it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments below so I know that you guys made it to the end and shout out to the winner of the last giveaway. So I'll reach out to you on Twitter that you won that magnetic stand from last week's video. But that's gonna do it. If you guys wanna watch some more videos on iPad OS, Mac OS, or maybe something that's coming in the near future to WWDC, become one of these videos right here. But I'm out of here, everybody.